Bruce and Ashley Langeland live with the impact of a vaccine-preventable disease. Ashley was six months old when meningitis from a pneumococcal infection left her with profound disability. Ash has cerebral palsy, epilepsy. Um, she's profoundly deaf. She's never walked or talked. That was before there was a vaccine. Now there is one and Bruce says it's essential. I don't want parents to have to go through this to realise they should have got their kids vaccinated. National data shows the rate of fully vaccinated children has continued to fall over the past five years at all milestones, one, two and five years old. It's heading in the wrong direction and so we certainly can't just leave things as they are. It includes diseases ranging from tetanus to whooping cough. Among teens, HPV vaccines that prevent cervical cancer have slipped below 80%. These figures are alarming and they will reach a critical point. It comes amid polio and measles outbreaks overseas. We will see more disease in the community, greater spread of disease, more outbreaks and also more hospitalisations and potentially deaths. A national research project has found online misinformation is contributing to the problem. Other barriers include cost, difficulty finding an available GP appointment and parental distress. It's prompted calls for COVID-style pop-up clinics to help kids catch up. The government says it's finalising a new national immunisation strategy. To think that after all of the progress that's been made in recent decades that we are going backwards, I personally find that very troubling. The Australian Medical Association says the declining rates should be a wake-up call and awareness campaigns are needed. Alison Branley, ABC News.